Welcome to the Awoken Word Podcast. I'm your host, Anuj Rastogi. It's always been difficult to figure out just how to best introduce the enigma that I see in the mirror every single day, me. And this introduction is a unique one for sure. Where do I begin? Well, for starters, I'm a husband, father, musician, I'm a music composer with multiple studio and compilation releases, and I'm currently sitting on nearly three albums worth of unreleased music. I've also scored for film and for media, and some of you may know me by my producer alias, Omnesia. As well, at points I've been dabbling in visual arts, as a painter, as a sculptor, as a graphic artist. I attempt to be a handyman, and I will leave it to my wife to weigh in with a judgment on how well that's going. I am an unapologetic nerd, and I'm a writer. I'm an active spoken word poet, and I am also currently uh, sifting through about 130 pages of my original work with hopes of publishing one day. I am also a video maker. I find a lot of gratification in creating video and a moving story, if you will. As far as I know, and from what some people have told me, I'm mostly sentient, conscientious, conflicted. I'm a man in this world, but with my head in the clouds. I've amassed a mountain of high-quality and situationally specific dad jokes. I'm struggling to be human. I'm optimistically hopeless, and yet hopelessly optimistic. In all this, I suppose you could say I'm a professional human being. I've done my 10,000 hours as a person, thinking, functioning, stumbling, and curiously exploring this world and this life through various escapades. In university, I studied biochemistry and then switched gears, so I ended up with an undergrad degree in international business with a minor in South Asian history, as well as an MBA. But personally, being wired as I am, I have found degrees to be of little real consequence in my own life. However, I know that this varies from person to person, and that some fields, particularly those in the worlds of science, require a certain educational foundation. That said, I am not an expert in perhaps any of the realms we'll be discussing on this show. I am not formally trained in the disciplines of history, political sciences, sociology, evolutionary biology, or AI. However, I've got a deep and long-running interest in these and countless other fields of human knowledge and experience. I have read a lot on all sorts of subjects, and my current in-progress pile of books is shamefully growing and unfinished. I'm sure you'll hear more about how scatterbrained I can be at some other point. Anyhow, I've spent a lot of my years thinking about these things and talking about them, I have internalized the world around me for as long as I can remember. In fact, back in high school and undergrad, I would often end up at coffee shops and bookstores with friends, discussing and debating ideas at all hours of the day, conceiving of thought experiments and trying to make sense of this world. I tend to discuss ideas on their merit and their usefulness, not on academic validation, though I do respect and value the rigor of academic approaches and the positions of true experts. Now, with this podcast, there are a few key principles, or pillars, if you will, that I would like to hold true to. 1. Nuance. Not everything is simple, binary, or black and white. Sometimes you just have to dig deep and explore all of the different shades of gray to really understand the complexity of a situation. 2. Respectful dialogue. It is possible to hold different views ideologically from another person and yet still respect the individual. We all owe this to each other, now more than ever. 3. Long-form exploration. In a world increasingly pushing important conversations into 280-character tweets, 15-second sound bites, and 12-minute extended interviews, we've given up on our opportunity to really dig deep and explore and understand the journey. 
Some things really do just take time to explore. And four, breadth and depth. If it wasn't already apparent, I am interested in a lot of different things, and I love to engage with all sorts of people on a variety of topics. From philosophy, history, race, and culture, to science, space, AI, and technology, music, reshaping our world, the future, the power of story, what makes us all unique, and what makes us all alike. So, why am I doing this podcast? What's driving me? But more importantly, why should you be listening to this podcast? After all, your time is important, and you've got shit to do. Well, like many others have said before me, I believe that there are only two ways to move through the material, external, and internal conflicts of this life. Violence or conversation. We know where the former leads ultimately every time. This podcast is intended to be the latter. I want to challenge and evolve ideas, intuitions, and convictions. We desperately need long-form conversation to explore nuance and story. Now, I must pause and just say to my mother, I apologize in advance. There is some cussing and some swearing in this podcast. Yes, it's true. I do swear. I'm sorry. Please don't be mad at me. Anyhow, back to business. I'm starting this podcast because this world is quite simply batshit crazy, and it's often terrifying. And yet, this same world is incredibly beautiful and mesmerizing. I want to get to know people who are interesting, who hold opinions and have life experiences that may not be familiar to me. And I want to break bread with the human in all of us. This podcast is my humble attempt to bring a grain of goodness, conversation, and inspiration to the beach of human experience. This podcast is my love letter to you all and what it means to be human. It's a journey, and I'd appreciate your company along the way. Without further ado, I present to you the Awoken Word Podcast. This podcast is my humble attempt to bring a full grain of sand of goodness to the beach of human experience. Inspiring. This podcast is my love letter to all of you. The Awoken Word Podcast. Free will. What is free will? What does this term even mean? Does any degree of free will even exist? These questions have confounded, inspired, and enamored the human mind since the moment we first found enough time to paint murals in caves. It's a question that's been a nagging itch in my own mind throughout my life. And so now I'll throw my own hat into the ring with my particular hypothesis on this matter. This hypothesis struck me suddenly late one afternoon this past summer, when I was walking through the streets of downtown Toronto. In fact, this particular realization was a likely catalyst and a most recent catalyst for me getting this podcast off the ground at this point in my life. Please note, for the next several minutes, I may be using the terms hypothesis, thesis, and theory interchangeably. I am well aware that these are distinct ideas in science, but sometimes poetic license just trumps all else. And with that, I present to you the theory of encumbered will. I believe in free will, but free will does not mean one without resistance and friction. Free will is not unencumbered will. There are always the elements of biology, bias, life experience, biochemical rewards in our neural pathways, social conditioning, societal context, distractions, genetic predispositions, and randomness. The container of the universe is vast, and the fluid of life that we all move through is incredibly viscous, 
There is a resistance in this cosmic soup that we find ourselves in. And that viscosity often appears pitted against our own true agency. However, in this theory of encumbered will, any truly free will, however little or insignificant it may be, is infinitely greater than the zero free will available in a deterministic model of the universe. Though less romantic and less likely to appear on a bumper sticker, it is my belief that encumbered will is a more accurate description of our reality. And within this universe of encumbered will, choice is the rebel army pursuing a rebellion, however modest. On the topic of choice, I must note that we do not choose outcomes. We choose paths that lead to those outcomes. Or to put it another way, we choose paths without understanding or valuing what those outcomes may be. The outcomes may be, in simple terms, positive or negative for two different people depending on their individual time horizons. And you control little of the randomness and external factors, hardwiring and resistance that is introduced into the paths that lead to those outcomes. The ends and the means have a complex, intersectional relationship that is causal, but not in a one-to-one, -one isolated relationship. The universe is complex and unified in that everything in one corner, no matter how distant, affects everything in another corner. Randomness, intersecting causal actions and intentions, create a cosmic soup of possibilities, and no computer simulation could ever predict with complete accuracy the causal circumstances that led to everything that has ever happened, let alone predict everything that is yet to happen. Outcomes are not in our control. Outcomes cannot be equal for all people. Equal will does not result in equal outcomes. And outcomes face a unique rebellion in the case of human beings, our will. From my vantage point, encumbered will is free will, but it is not a clean, straight, and easy path. We continue to fight many outside and inside forces to be free in our will. To be free is to choose between two or more paths, not necessarily outcomes, but paths, at any moment. Much, perhaps most, of that is unconscious or subconscious based on our loose biological and social hardwiring. Some of this hardwiring is breakable and some not. Yet in any moment we find ourselves to be conscious of a choice, so long as we are cognitively able, we can and do make choices. Take this moment for example. I chose to stop here, mid-step, on a busy street corner to type these thoughts on this phone, only very partially aware of what the outcome may be. It's a focus on a path and an action, not an outcome. I could be hit by a passing bus, yelled at by an old lady, or have a dog piss on my leg because I'm standing here beside a fire hydrant. Or, I may have just penned a thought that will inform much of my future and years of interesting discussion. That all remains to be seen. At least it appears, for the moment. The old ladies are blissfully unaware of me, buses are moving along, and my pant legs have been overlooked by passing poodles. So now you know, my position on free will is that it is in fact encumbered will with varying degrees of freedom, and still, in my humble opinion, however limited that degree of freedom is within the constraints of one's universe, any freedom at all is also cause for hope. I'm not saying something that is entirely unique or entirely original. Many before me have said this. Many will continue to say this. Many people who have much more training, education, and have spent much more time with the problem of free will. I don't profess to be an expert in the matter, but what I did realize one day is that in the various models of free will versus uh, determinism, uh, the idea of free will versus destiny or predestination. 
Somewhere in there, something was missing for me. And I can't suggest that this particular hypothesis is filling in all the gaps, but it is my own individual way of internalizing the question and of internalizing the different factors that may be at play. I realize from my own subjective conscious experience that free will could be an illusion. However, I do believe that I am an agent in my own action. I do believe that I make a choice every now and then. Some of those choices I may or may not be aware of, and some of them, or many of them, have all sorts of hardwiring at play. However, any opportunity to exercise any level of agency, and even the most insignificant amount of free will, is still infinitely greater than having no free will at all. And in the absence of any free will, I'm not really sure what we do with that at a personal level, at a social level, uh, nor do I really understand what's played out in the universe. Was all of this just set in motion since the Big Bang, and has it just been trickling down over 13.8 billion years since? Or do we actually have any sort of an, a hand in the mix? So anyhow, yeah, that's the theory of encumbered will. Let me close by saying that this entire podcast is an example of me exercising my highly encumbered free will. I have many odds stacked against this venture, plus a force that is ultimately in play on all of us, and definitely for me, is my own self-doubt, which perhaps I'll talk about at another time. This podcast is my encumbered free will rebellion against the forces of nature, genetics, social circumstance, naysayers, self-doubt, and distraction. So there you have it. Until further notice and a change of opinion on this matter, from here on in when I mention my notion of free will, it shall be known as encumbered will. If you'd like to support the Awoken Word podcast, there are many ways you can do it. You can subscribe in your app of choice. We're on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or TuneIn, for example. The biggest thing that you can do is rate this podcast and leave your review in iTunes or wherever you listen to it. You can also talk about this podcast, its guests, or the ideas shared on it in your own podcasts. If you find benefit in this show, tell your friends, tell your family, and even more importantly, tell your enemies. They'll appreciate it too. And of course, you can also follow us on social media, particularly on Twitter. Our handle there is at Awoken Word, on Instagram as at Awoken Word Podcast, or on our Facebook page. Thank you. Your support is greatly appreciated. <laughs>